Hey guys, I'm Matt Little Ruby and welcome to my latest video. So today I'm going with a Euro 2016 semi-final predictions. I was going to do one for the quarters, but I just didn't find time. So now I'm bringing you one for the semi. So obviously the Euro 2016 final takes place on Sunday, but in this video I'm going to predict who I think is going to make it there. So the first game we've got is Wales versus Portugal. Now Wales have been absolutely class in this tournament, except from when they played England, where they lost. Um, although I thought they probably deserved to draw that game, but... Um, what happened happened. Apart from that, they've looked absolutely class. They battered Russia. They did Belgium pretty well. And Belgium were one of the favourites to, to win the tournament at the start. Um, they didn't perform that great, so I guess that's something to say there. But just Ramsey, Allen, Taylor, Williams, Bale have all been class. Even Hennessy and Gold has made some great saves. I'm really behind Wales. I mean, I said from the start, I'm going to sort of support Wales I guess you could say um, I, I mean I, I explained in a previous video why I stopped supporting England while, while they were under Roy Hodgson but now he's gone I'm going to be giving them another chance in the next tournament and the qualifiers and all that stuff but qualifiers don't really matter to me much I just sort of they're just there I don't really care but major tournament I will be back in England but Wales I said from the start I thought they were going to do something special I knew it was the first tournament, obviously, and a lot of people would be like, oh, they'd probably just get knocked out in the group stage, but they've proven everyone were, everyone wrong, and they've kept dreaming, and they've made it to the semis. Now, with the actual game itself, Davis and Ramsey are suspended as they picked up too many yellow cards. Um, throughout the tournament, I think the yellow card rule is a bit, um, is a bit silly, like, for this tournament, if you get two in five games, you get suspended, like, that's just no... It should have got overwritten after the group stage in my opinion but never mind so I expect that Andy King or Johnny Williams is going to be coming in for Ramsey and then probably one of the other they'll bring in an extra centre back and put Neil Taylor out <clears throat> as the left back so they'll probably bring in you know James Collins or someone like that um, apart from that I think the team's pretty much going to be how it's been for a lot of the time you know Joe Ledley, Joe Allen, Bale Obviously, Ashley Williams. I think Robson Carney is going to start ahead of Vokes, even though Vokes did score. Robson Carney just his goal was boss, so hopefully he can do something like that in this game. Now on to Ronaldo. I mean Portugal. I have no idea how Portugal have got this far. They definitely don't deserve it. They got <clears throat> and each of literally every game they played they've got lucky in the group stage they drew every game and a lot of them they should have lost to Hungary definitely I don't know how they managed to pull that back but they did they're here so I can't really complain too much just got to hope that Wales do the business yes I'm a bit biased because I really want Wales to win and I've got a bet on them winning the whole thing so I'd like that to sort of come to come to pass but in terms of Portugal's team for the game, it's going to be largely unchanged from the last game against... This is the part where I need to remember they were against Poland. Yeah, the last game against Poland, the only change they're probably going to make is Pepe is looking to be unfit, so they probably bring in another centre-back. Um, I'm not quite sure. Maybe Bruno Alves, I'm not sure if he's even there. He's just another Portuguese centre-back that I can just think of. Um, but Pepe will be a massive loss because he's been their best defender, I would say, in the tournament. And for him to not be there could be a bit of a problem. So overall, I think Wales are going to take this game. I just think there's going to be a massive game for Joe Allen. I think he's going to control the midfield alongside Ledley and Andy King or Williams, whoever come, drops in for Ramsey. just think they're going to boss the midfield and then the Portugal are just not going to be able to, to cope with that. With the, with the sort of players. Portugal play very wide, so I think there's going to be a lot of gaps in there, especially with the wing-backs of Wales pushing forward. I just think it's going to be too much for Portugal, and Wales are going to win the game 2-0. Now on to the next semi-final, Germany versus France. Now this game is going to be really, really exciting. Both two heavyweight European sides, both have a point to prove, and they're just going to go at it in this just blockbuster of a match. Now, talking about Germany specifically, they've had a very average tournament, I would say, compared to the World Cup, where they looked dominant through through a lot of it, and obviously they had the big semi-final win against Brazil. But in this tournament, they've been very inconsistent. Some games, they've blown teams away. Other, 
other games, they've just been like, meh, they somehow get through. Like, I think they were very lucky to get past Italy. I thought Italy probably deserved to win that game, and a lot of people had Italy tipped to win the whole thing, so it was a bit of a shock, but I guess it's Germany, penalty shootouts, we don't need to, to go into, into the cliche there, but yeah, I'm not quite sure how Germany got there either. They have been pretty good, I would say they deserve to at least get to the quarters, but I wasn't really that impressed with them against Italy, but they won the game, so they're here they are. Um, as for Germany, they've got a lot of problems in terms of selection because they'll have no Hummels, who's suspended, and Gomez is definitely out with an injury, and then there's Schweinsteiger and Kadira who are also looking unlikely for it, which means could be seeing the, I think it's the tournament debut of Emre Chan, obviously being a Liverpool fan myself, I'm really looking forward to see this guy play on the international stage in actual midfield rather than at right back where he's played um, I think he played a lot of qualifying games as a right back, but he's definitely a better centre midfielder than he is a right back. So this could be an opportunity for him to get in there and s soak in the atmosphere, and hopefully he can grow as a player. Even though it's only one game, you know, he, if he performs well in Germany, get to the final, he might play in the final, and he might have a, a, a sort of a decent little run over these last two matches and be come back feeling a lot more confident for Liverpool which obviously I care about more than these international things but obviously the international tournaments are fun to watch. Now we move on to France now they have looked really good throughout the tournament not all the time but like they did struggle against teams like Albania and I think um, Ukraine they struggled against as well um, but then again they blew Iceland away the other night and I think they finished 5-2 in the end um, which is not too bad for Iceland, I guess. They they seem to enjoy it, even though they lost, they got two goals. And But France absolutely blew them away in that game. It was sort of similar to Germany against Brazil, that was sort of less less for shock because obviously Brazil and Germany are perceived to be more even teams, whereas France on versus Iceland, Iceland are considered underdogs, like they just are. Um, but yeah, credit. just want to say credit to Iceland. They've been absolutely class throughout this tournament. And, you know, the home thing that's really cool even though it's I think it was originally done in Scotland but yeah it's just cool how they all do that and the crowd is pretty boss I can see a lot of Premier League teams doing that this season um, wouldn't mind seeing it in Liverpool to be fair but like I said France have struggled against the more sort of defensive tactical teams whereas Iceland I think because they beat England they're a bit more confident so they didn't perhaps play as defensively as they should have but they obviously France managed to break them down but with Germany their defence is even better like obviously it's so much better like I think Germany have got one of the best defences in world football really you know you've got the likes of Boateng and of, yeah you haven't got Hummels but then you've got um, Her Hervides you've got um, Heck to the left back you've got um, oh there's one more there's one more big one that is here somewhere but yeah I can't remember but they've got quite a few centre backs in there and a lot of obviously like the other like, full backs and that and the midfield is exceptionally strong even without Schweinsteiger and you know those sort of players they've still got the likes of Ozil, Cruz, Goetze, Chan, Gun Gundahan I think is at the tournament I'm not 100% sure um, about that actually I don't think he is but yeah if you know let me know down in the comments is Gundahan actually in this tournament but yeah, I don't, I'm not much pleasure on that. So I think it'll be a very tough game for both teams, although France don't have to worry about any bans or injuries. They're completely, their selection is purely, just, they can pick literally any player in their squad and there's no problems like that. But despite Germany's previous record of destroying a team, or destroying a host team at a major tournament like they did against Brazil when it finished 7-1 I think this is going to be like one of the closest games it's going to be as close as Germany when they played Italy and so I think that a key player to win the game the key player in this is going to be Manuel Neuer I just think he's going to keep Germany in it it's going to keep the team from conceding too many goals I do think the game is going to finish 1-1 and then Germany are going to go on to win on penalties because that's just what Germany do and yeah 
I just can I can just see them doing it. Even though the penalties were pretty poor against Italy, but so were Italy's. I mean, we just have to look at Zaza's for that. I mean, I oh, don't even know what he was doing with the little little tiptoes run up. I have no idea. And then he's blasted over the bar. Worst penalty I've ever seen. But yeah, I just think Germany are going to do it, and I think Neuer is going to save the winning penalty. So guys, that does bring the video to a close. I hope you did enjoy. It. Leave a like if you did. Comment on what you think is going to happen in the semi-finals. Do you think Wales are going to go through? Or do you think Portugal are going to have the edge with Ronaldo and Renato Sanchez? Or also let me know what you think is going to happen with Germany and France. Do you think Germany are going to absolutely topple France? Or do you think the likes of Lacazette and Griezmann are going to be too much for the Germans? Let me know. And subscribe if you're new. I bring all sorts of content on here. It's just mainly sort of things that I'm interested in, you know, football, I'm interested in films, gaming, music sometimes, that sort of thing. I do vlogs as well and rants, so just there's a lot around for you to check out. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos. And I'll see you next time guys. Take care.